Hello and thank you for joining us for this latest empowerment talk. I'm Juliet McGratton from 261 Fearless, a global network which uses running to unite and empower women around the world. Now, we're passionate about improving the health and well-being of all women and firmly believe in using our global platform for education. So our series of empowerment talks features high profile, influential women in the roles in business, sport, health, leadership, and we talk to them so we can be um, educated, motivated, informed and inspired by them. Now, today's guest is Sue Anstis, and she's simply perfect for tackling our topic today, which is the power of women's networks. Now, Sue has vast experience in the world of sport. She's worked in sports marketing and PR for over 30 years. Uh, she was the founding trustee of the Women's Sports Trust. And in 2018, she actually received an MBE for her services to grassroots and women's sport. Now, last year, she founded the company Fearless Women to drive positive change in women's sports. And she's also founded and hosts a fabulous podcast called The Game Changers. She also, there's a lot here, she also has a book coming out this year called Game On, The Unstoppable Rise of Women's Sport, which I simply can't wait to read. And particularly relevant to today's topic, Sue co-created the Women's Sport Collective, a networking group for all women who work in the world of sport, regardless of their level of expertise, their field of exp experience or their geographical location. So you can see why we were very keen to have Sue as an Empowerment Talk guest. So welcome, Sue. Thank you. Thank you. What a fabulous introduction. Thank you very much. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of wonderful things to say about you. So, <laughs> so I'm just going to dive straight in, Sue, so we can get on to our, our topic of networking. Um, but perhaps you can start by telling us a little bit about your work and the motivation that drives you. Uh, I guess my work now, here and now, is very much focused around women and, and sport and physical activity. And, and part of that motivation is probably my love of sports over the years and, and involvement in sport both from a grassroots and also working with elite athletes and and teams at the very top ends I think that's probably what motivates me and I and without getting too profound so early on into the conversation I guess that bigger piece around how equality within sport which isn't um, as balanced as we'd like it to be at the moment how that then impacts society so for me it's that the bigger societal influence that equality in sport can have uh, for women and girls everywhere really so I think that's that's probably the, the real driving force. Mm, absolutely and, and in terms of your career um, you know our topic is networks today in terms of your career how have networks helped you on your way through your career? They've been massively massively important to my career and I, I think probably if you asked me uh, 25 years ago whatever, I would never have thought that that would be the case or how important that would be but but Without doubt, I, I love networking. I'm a very kind of sociable person anyway. So I do love to network and to meet new people, um, to learn new things. And um, I just think across time, both physically networking at events and meetings and building that, that network and those connections. Um, and then probably the last decade across, uh, with, with it's social media through Twitter and LinkedIn and, and establishing uh, more digital networks of people that I may never meet but I feel that I, I know and have a connection to um, but it's been really really important and probably very much so in the last few years of um, the development of things like the Game Changers podcast and uh, the new business and so on I think uh, very much that it's, it's kind of come to the fore I've seen really just how powerful that is. And what makes you so passionate about bringing women together and, and, and about sport in general? I think because I've been so fortunate to uh, to benefit from networks and, and connections. I think in, you mentioned there the Women's Sport Collective. Actually, it was a couple of years ago at Promote, we first started having some lunches and hosting women. And I think it was because I would meet these amazing women in fantastic roles in sport, really senior roles. And I would say, oh, you must know so-and-so, or you, you, you met, you know, there's similar learnings that you could have from someone over here. And they didn't always know of each other. And I almost couldn't believe that these incredible women doing brilliant things didn't necessarily know other women who were either in similar roles or you know in different organizations so for me it was about uh, feeling like something I could add value I could help to bring them together um, that would kind of enhance uh, their learnings and they could support each other and so on so I think for me that's probably how it started was just that feeling of um, because I had a strong network then being in a place to be able to help others 
to experience all the, all the benefits that come from that too. And, and you mentioned benefits there. I mean, what are the, I mean, particularly in terms of, of women, what are the benefits of, of a women's only network, you know, the women's sport collective? What, what makes that different? What, what can that bring to, to women? Yeah, it's, a, it's a really interesting point. And I know um, it's interesting when we launch and there's within the Women's Sport Trust uh, on the board there, we have men and women on the board there and we work a lot with, with men through, uh, we've got a big campaign called Ambition and we've got lots of male activators across that too. So I re absolutely recognise the importance of having men as, in many cases, they're the gatekeepers, aren't they, in terms of influence and change. And some of the, um, one of the uh, directors, one of the non-exec directors on the Women's Sport Trust did comment to me at the time of setting up the Women's Sport Collective, surely uh, you know, the, these women are saying they, uh, they're more comfortable networking with the women, but really, wouldn't it be better to have more men involved and have them networking and build their confidence to network with men and women too? Uh, which mm -hmm. I kind of see, but actually just having researched the group and having seen the impact of those meetings, they just seem much more confident to talk very openly, not just about the challenges they face, but about the opportunities and to ask questions of other women. It feels like it's um, a safer environment, but people just feel more relaxed and more open in that environment. So whilst I absolutely appreciate the need to work with men, and I think further down the line, we will absolutely be doing more of that. For the moment, I can just see that the power um, of women supporting other women and there is always a danger isn't there that actually becomes a bit exclusive almost as if you know we could be accused of doing the the same that men have done for years and years of locking women out of sport actually by creating women's only spaces are we excluding men but actually a we haven't had access to those places in the past but also i just think the benefits that come from women talking from women and i'm talking about subjects that probably do matter only to women as well um I've just seen almost in the first few months, I guess the very fact that we've got, you know, 1700 members already uh, does show you that there was almost a need for this, that women want to support uh, and be in a, an environment with, with women only. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think we definitely see that in 261 Fearless, you know, it, the, our running club time, um, although we have men on our board, etc. the running club time is purely for women. And as you say, it's a safe space and they talk about things they wouldn't talk about otherwise. Mm. And actually we often find they get their confidence and then they feel able to go out and, absolutely. and run or network or whatever in, in other um, areas where, where there are mixed genders. So yeah, yeah. And I mean, in terms of networking, what, why, you know, can you just not manage on your own? Why is it important <laughs> for women to, to network? <laughs> Yeah, and I, I think I just look back at all the benefits that I've had from that, both from uh, building confidence and the, and the things that you learn from other people and those connections. Um, and then I, I do think actually it's not, at the time you don't even think about it and the value of it, but it is the being able to contact, to grow knowledge, to reach out to people. I think so much of networking is about investing. It's, it takes a long time, but investing over time and building trust in those relationships. So. Uh, yes, people can, can work on their own and work independently, um, but hey, there's so much more to be gained from having a strong network, but it's so much more pleasurable as well. It's lovely to share things with other people. And, to, and, and I do say, I come back again to, I guess, social media. And obviously, because we're so uh, isolated now in terms of our physical work, actually the power of a, of a digital network, so something like LinkedIn, where you can reach and impact and influence others, whatever your role, whether you're trying to raise profile for a campaign or event or you're selling products actually to have that massively extended network that's that's almost beyond you build your network and then obviously you reach the, the contacts of those contacts so it's that extension of, of a network uh, can be hugely powerful wh whatever your role is so if somebody's listening and they're thinking oh I, yeah networking I, I need to do a bit of that um where do they where do they start have you got any tips for how to start yeah, I guess, and it's, and it's almost like slightly different tips from uh, now in, in lockdown sure. versus going to <laughs> events and conferences, which we will be again soon, won't we? I think one of the core things for me is it's about giving, is that I think some people come to networking and think it's about uh, whether it, that's at events or whether it's online, but almost what's in it for me? How can I benefit from this person that I'm talking to or making a connection with? I think absolutely it all starts with, with giving, with being generous, with looking at what it is that you have to offer. Um, I very much work a bit of a, my life <laughs> mission is what goes around comes around. I really do believe actually could you invest in things and that's what, what um, comes back to you in the future. You reap what you sow, uh, but very much with networking. I think it's about meeting people and thinking, what can I do for you? How can I help you? Can I make an introduction? Have I got useful information I can share? How can I 
help in some way and then it, that all goes around in time and will come back to benefit you um so i think that's one would be absolutely one of my key things would be um around just make, kind of taking the time to share with people and to uh you know be ge give generously give to things um and similarly i think it is about having that confidence and preparation it doesn't just happen naturally so when we again in the world of us going out into events in the future i think it is about preparing so i would always uh, try where i can to get to an event fairly early I, and I've, I've been to events too I, um i it was lovely to hear on a podcast recently um uh, laura mcqueen from leaders who's now the heading leaders the massive sports networking and you know, sports business um but saying when she first went to these events she would go find herself staying in the bathroom for a bit too long you know in between the breaks because she was a bit scared and intimidated by so many men at those events so we've all been there i've got been to um, events like that where actually you do feel a little bit intimidated but walking into a room of people that you don't know so getting to a venue early being an early attempt definitely makes it easier than walking into a room full of people um similarly uh, preparing so wouldn't it, simple things like business cards but being able to ha you know describe who you are what you do in a sentence or two so having that confidence and, and i'm just gonna say you you mentioned that whole the benefit of being in women's networks i'm hoping with all the work we're doing with Women's Sport Collective, where we're going off into little groups and introducing ourselves, the more people do that, the more confident they'll feel to do that in a, in a bigger group with new people in the future. Um, so definitely, yeah, that kind of preparation um, and, then, and then the following up afterwards. So I think um, it's easy to be at an event and meet loads of people and hand out lots of cards. Uh, and then we all go back to the office and we get on with our business and that's kind of over. But I think, taking the time to, to follow up with people, to find them, whether it is uh, on LinkedIn or on Instagram or Twitter, to interact with them again. So to maintain that relationship, it isn't enough to just meet somebody once and think they're now part of your network. It's how, what can I give to them and how can I build that relationship? So um, it's not a science clearly, but I think mm -hmm. more goes in, you know, it takes work uh, mm -hmm. to build a network. It isn't just that you're suddenly gonna meet someone and then they're going to trust you and, and come to you in the future. So making sure you're including them in the information you're sending out or, or, or um, yeah, just working at it really. Yeah, I think that's really, I think that's really um, important point, isn't it? Actually, it's something you've got to work out and make time for and, and do before and after the, the events that, that you go to. Any other do's and don'ts, anything that annoys you or <laughs> that we should avoid? Think, well, it's interesting, isn't it? I think good networkers, I think it's about asking questions and listening. So I, again, I think, uh, meeting people for the first time, there is um, uh, a tendency, and I don't know whether it's more of a male tendency potentially, but I know I've been to lots of events where I sit at dinners or I sit at whatever, and I can tell you all about the people I've sat with. I can tell you about their families and where they went to university and what they've studied and their career paths. And they don't know anything about me because they haven't asked a question because, but actually it's in my nature to ask questions because I am I am interested to know more about other people. But that's a bit that then almost gives you the information that gives you not the power but gives you the potential then to make a connection to somebody else or to see what their interest is so i think definitely going to ask questions rather than necessarily need feeling the need to talk about um yourself the whole time and perhaps mm. setting realistic targets so before you go to an event you know not thinking i'm going to walk into this room and i'm almost going to come away with 100 new contacts but just try and find five new contacts or connections um uh, that you might make I, mean, I guess the people that i know that are very skilled in this is a lot about making i guess what i've done with the women's sport collective is, is this on a massive scale but um but making connections where you do meet somebody and you think oh, they, they it's not there's no value to me but it might help if i introduce that person to that person so doing those introductions uh, can i definitely pay dividends in the future because it puts you um in the mind of those people when, when they might be looking for for opportunities so i think it's about awareness ultimately you're trying to create a network and then making sure that you're front of mind when people are thinking about things in the future. And if you're if you're somebody who wants to hide in the toilets beforehand and just come out when the speaker's about to start, um, any, any advice about how you can build confidence? How, how can you feel confident walking into that venue to just strike up a conversation with somebody? Yeah, and it does help. I think it definitely helps when you know one or two people. I guess that from a few, purely physical point of view of going to events, um, I, and I, I say, well, I was in the fitness industry probably for 15, 20 years before I moved much more into sports. And I can remember going with my team, my younger employees, walking into a conference. And, and for me, it was just the most exciting thing, like UK Active's annual event or a big le leisure industry week and walking around. And I knew everybody because I've been there for 25 years and I'd worked with many different brands. 
and, and almost putting myself in their position of uh, actually it's really scary to go in and not know how do you start a conversation especially uh, probably as a younger person who doesn't necessarily have as much experience to share almost you're newer to it um so I would try and um, put myself in their their situations almost to to see how I could help them and coach them on that so I think finding some finding one person that you know and um you know, I would encourage them, though, not to, there is a tendency, I think, when you've got a small group and you know each other, to look inwardly and not look out and make new contacts. I would always say, I don't want to look over and see five of my team in a little circle talking. They, I want them to be out making new, new contacts and connections. And I recognise it's hard to break into a group. When there's a group talking, it's quite hard just to amble up and, and join into that. So um, I think sometimes it is um, just finding people and, and not necessarily looking for a person that uh, you know, there'll be certain people that you absolutely fully want to go and talk to, but many people might want to go and talk to them because they're the key person, whether that's the speaker coming off the stage or somebody connected with the event. But actually, there'll be many other people around that are like you, that, that are looking for someone to talk to, especially at an event. Um, so actually going to talk to them because you don't know who they are, who they might be connected to. You know, there will be, some, there's always something fascinating of interest of whoever you talk to at an event. So um, I think it's almost like going with some targets to make connections, but don't be too concerned about who it is you talk to just uh you know you can help as well and be, and be kind to other people as you get more experience who might be out looking like they're a little bit lost and they're looking for someone to talk to so kind of bring them into your circle and um and make them feel included too and, and i guess maybe do you think actually feeling that you have the as an equal right to be there as they do because sometimes <laughs> i think you sometimes like you say you feel a bit intimidated and maybe a bit of imposter syndrome but actually just feeling that you should be there <laughs> absolutely and, and in fact for women you know in, in a way it's easier because there's less of us I mean one thing I've said in the past is almost like standing out in a in a busy event uh, and actually as a woman you sometimes already do because there's less women there so I know uh, some women that I've worked with in the past wear really bright clothes or wear an orange dress or something red or whatever to stand out because you'll be in a mass of blue and grey suits and uh, you know come men of a certain age and look at an event so actually make yourself distinctive to be remembered and to stand out uh, can, you know can be one of those things but absolutely you have as much right to be there as anybody else that, that is there so so um, yeah without doubt having that trying to have that confidence and I do recognize sometimes it is a confidence thing but the more that you do uh, you know it builds upon it the next event you go to the next time you're there um, you'll have more connections and, 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 have, and build that confidence. Hmm. I like that standing out. I'm going to remember that and go for the bright colours. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and a question sort of from me personally, but hopefully it will be helpful to other people as well. Um, when you've, you know, I've got now I've got a little book where I write the names of people that I want to keep in contact with and things, but I don't really know how to keep in touch with them. You know, any any ideas for keeping up those connections? How how often should you sort of drop people a line just to kind of keep in touch? And and any any tips on, on that really, keeping a, your list yeah, up to date? It's interesting, isn't it? and I do, and I know um, if you read lots of American books on networking, it's, you know, send them this and, and uh, drop them a line and whatever, but it almost feels a little bit cheesy and unnecessary if your contact with them isn't that strong. Again, I don't mean to keep coming back to LinkedIn, but it is a bit of a godsend in terms of business networking. Actually, if you've got a presence on LinkedIn, so be sharing useful information and contacts in, on LinkedIn. But similarly, if you're, you're connected to them and linked to them and they are sharing um, information then actually it's about liking and commenting on what they're sharing so make a point to find them to look at them to find them on twitter to engage with them in that way so to be seen to be supportive of the things they're they're sharing and to amplify uh, what they're doing is a good way to build to further build that that network and um in terms of what i guess what you're sharing i, I don't think it's not about going to them with something that feels trite that you've created but if you genuinely feel there's something that they would be of in, you know interest in um then by all means you know do share so um mm. i think it's just that balance of um i said that whole kind of following up afterwards and similarly i mean a lot of my networking is if i'm on a call now i'm on a conference call and there's 10 other people i'll go and link into them all on linkedin before the call or definitely after the call or if I'm an event so if I'm an event and then um, I'm on Twitter and there's a hashtag and there are people there I'll follow who's commenting on things and I will link into them all and follow them all on Twitter so that digital piece that you can then do and, I, and it's lovely to then meet people and say oh I've followed you on Twitter for years or I've you know we've been connected and then you kind of physically meet them in person so I do think um, 
and I guess that's one thing the Women's Sport Collective has really illustrated. I feel there are women in the last year that I've got an amazing relationship with and I know what they're doing, like you, and I know what they're doing and I've met, you know, they've been to events and things. I've never met them in person, but I do mm-hmm. still now feel I could call upon them or I could give them some advice or I could talk to them about stuff. So it doesn't have to be, I guess that's one thing that this has taught us this last year. It doesn't have to be a physical, I met them at an event. It could be, I've been on a call with them and, and then I've kind of connected with them in that way too. So um, that, that definitely does expand your opportunity to build that network, but still in a, in a very positive uh, way that, that uh, will bring benefits in the future. Yeah, great tips, thank you. Um, have you got a good networking lesson that you can share, something that's gone really well? Uh, good networking lesson. Well, I um, I don't know. I think back to when I think of networking, I think back to being at some of those big events and uh, uh, getting out there and, and, and talking too. So I guess a realisation for me is almost like when I've been at those events with other people and they've seen where I almost didn't realise how well connected I am. So I think that's almost a, a bit of a, a wake up call for me is to realise actually that is something that I've built over time through uh, trust and relationships and so on so uh, I guess some of those lessons have been um, for me is seeing how powerful that is and then how I'm able to um, to enable others to access that too I think also I guess on the networking side so some of the work I do now is um, almost like being paid to access that network so I do now work with some clients that want to reach uh, leisure operators or they want to reach people within sports and fitness and obviously having a really strong network I have that ability to do that. Now, some of that is uh, I'm really happy to do that anyway because I love making connections and introducing people. Um, but it's not overdoing that. I think there's a danger almost you've got some strong connections. I could continually be introducing people to senior per- people in sport or in fitness, but it's almost like that balance of making sure I'm giving as much as I'm asking of them. I think um, uh, you wouldn't want to kind of overdo that in terms of damaging that relationship that you have. So I think there is a, a path to be trod in terms of what you give and what you bring to the relationships, like any relationship really, isn't it? Um, versus what you ask of them in terms of uh, sure. them then following up with your contacts and connections too. So I think, again, it comes back down to this, I guess, being generous and thinking about what you can bring to, to mm-hmm. other people too. Mm. Mm, thought provoking. Um, <laughs> So, I mean, networking in general, um, great. Um, but why do you think it's particularly important in this kind of in the field of sport, um, especially for, for women? I guess for, uh, for women in sports, because we haven't been at, around the tables in those places. So I think if we look at the last 150 years of how sport and sports administration was you know, created from the people that played the sport to those that then became the volunteers and the coaches and the council, tools and and now in positions of decision making so it's so women are kind of fighting against that being denied access to those places and those rooms and those boards across all that time so we've got work to do to catch up and get ourselves there and therefore and and that power of the male network so whether we call it old boys club or whatever it might be but that power of everyone knows everybody because they've grown with this sport over the last few decades um is something that we you know we need to break into literally to to build our connections and our worth and our awareness. And, and I think boards are so much better now in terms of governance and, and looking at diversity. Um, but in the past, it's been very much about who you know, tap on the shoulder, would you like to come and you know, t- talk to us about joining this board and that board? So that is changing, but mm-hmm. still, if people don't know you and you're not even on their radar, uh, those opportunities don't arise. And that's from the board level, right through to being a senior coach or an administrator in any role really. So I think, um, there is no doubt uh, that having a strong network and being known, it might be that a recruitment agent will come and find you for a role, but actually there's still an awful lot about people knowing you and who you know. And, and that value of, of stakeholders and knowing people within the sector um, is also kind of highly valued as well too. So I think it's something um, not necessarily that comes more naturally to men. I think they've just grown up with it and they've been in those places, whether they've attended the schools or universities, they've played in teams that they've built, they've naturally built that network. So for women, it's almost like we're trying to have got to catch up a little bit uh, to be on an even footing with them in terms of um, the contacts and connections that we have too. Mm-hmm. So who, here's a question, <laughs> who's not on your networking list? <laughs> who's not on that list that you would like to be in touch with anybody in the world? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess it's interesting, it's interesting as well. Uh, that, that's what you think for the... Um, for the podcast and for the game changers, I've been really, really lucky to have to 
access and talk to some amazing, amazing women. And a lot of that has been through, um, I guess in the early days, I know Tanya Gray Thompson fairly well because we worked together with, at UK Active. And, and so through her and then through Chrissy Wellington, I think about the early ones in that first year, they're amazing women. Uh, and then the more that you, I got those on board, the more it was e able to access others. And it's been really interesting trying to get, for instance, some of the US, uh, Barclays have sponsored the last three series um, and then Sport England has sponsored one series. Uh, but with the Barclays series, it's Phyllis Women in Football. And I've been trying to access some really high profile female footballers. So the Megan Rapinos, the Mia Hams, whatever. And it's, it's done through their agents. And so, and it's, it's, tr it's tricky. And it's tricky because they don't know me and they don't know uh, um, my, what I've done in the UK. And they don't know, you know, so, that, so that's, that's hard. So I guess in terms of building that network, whereas in the UK, I would like to feel... Uh, it's almost using that network to access others. So there's a couple of, I'm not giving names away, but there's a couple of high, high profile uh, sports women or presenters that I had hoped to get and I tried to get through the agents and hadn't. And eventually it was through, uh, well, actually, I, I wanted to get Gabby Logan on the, on the podcast. And actually it was through asking Denise Lewis, who dropped an email to Gabby Logan, who half an hour later said, I'd love to be on the podcast. But it's because of a connection and that network of using one to invite another. Well, actually, I've been trying to get Gabby on for the last two series, but it was harder. So actually, from a US point of view, I guess that's where I feel I don't have that network and connection, where perhaps in the UK, um, people know the people that have been on the podcast. And they, so I think uh, that's something uh, that would be lovely to have more of that network, that global network would be really powerful, especially as the globe's getting so much smaller in terms of digital and contact and, and the enabling to, to reach people. So probably some of those, I'd like to feel I could uh, put a call into somebody and access some of those athletes and um, and those working in administration in the way that I feel I can do um, in the UK. Mm, mm. And I've done UK now. I've got to conquer the world. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just really trying to think of who I know in the US that might be able to help you. <laughs> uh, oh, um, just sort of um, bring it back to to two six one. Feel this a little bit. You know, um, it's we're a, a global network and with women from different countries cultures they speak different languages um and i think language in particular can be a barrier for getting in touch with with other women um i don't know if you have any ideas about how we can overcome this or or, or more generally overcome our, our fear to connect with others yeah it's interesting because actually with the uh, the women's sport collective I'd be, we were amazed about women we have about 40 different countries and we never mm. we never planned to launch it as a global network and we're not a global network in the way that you're not we're 85 percent uk we, our meetings are on uk time you know we are quite a, a uk based um network but actually so the women and so i am amazed i look at the meetings there's people from all over the world it's that and that excites me that's fantastic and we can learn so much from women in different places doing similar roles mm. in different places i think there's almost so much more we can learn perhaps sometimes and those you know around the corner doing a similar job in a similar place so um for me it really excites me the thought of talking to women in other places i guess we're really lucky aren't we in the uk that english is a language of so many countries so if i was trying to join a network overseas i can understand i would be much more nervous if i didn't speak the language at all to uh, you know there's obviously universal language of sport uh, you know there that there are lots of global connections and so on through events uh, but I can I could anticipate I would be more nervous of joining somewhere where it wasn't my first language. So, but I, I hope that won't stop people from feeling they can come and and mm. be involved and take some benefit from it. And it may not be um, that everything is as valuable to them. But I almost feel that connection, that global connection, is so exciting and so you know, and especially within the world of women's sports. So, what we and I guess in terms of researching the book, some of the stuff I've learned from what's been happening in New Zealand and. Australia and obviously in the States, but also across Europe in different countries, um, just, just what's happening and the developments that we can learn from rather than constantly reinventing the wheel, but you know, giving more, us more power uh, to know what's happening elsewhere. Yeah, it's really exciting. So I think we don't want to be insular and just look at what's happening in the UK. It's fantastic to see what's happening el elsewhere mm -hmm. in the world. Yeah, I agree. Like you say, I think there's so much to learn, isn't there, from from other cultures and um, the way they do things completely differently sometimes and we can learn <laughs> we can learn so much yeah absolutely absolutely fantastic oh well thank you so much Sue, for sharing all of that um, I say I'm a big fan of the Game Changers podcast and as I <laughs> looking forward to your book and also I'm part of the Women's Sport Collective so you know I've got a lot to be grateful to you for, for um, <laughs> in terms of my networking so I really appreciate that and appreciate you sharing 
um, all your tips and advice and um, very motivating to our listeners, I know, to go out and start creating or enlarging and enriching their, their networks. So thank you very, very much for your time. It's been wonderful to speak to you. Fantastic. Absolute pleasure. Pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.